Today I want to talk about gluing pages together in a journal or notebook. This seems to be causing a fair amount of stress among uh, some of you who are doing the journaling by fives process. And you know what, that timer is stressful enough, so we don't need any added stress. Um, so I'm going to give you some tips on gluing your pages together in your composition book if you choose to use a composition book. I want to make it clear that you don't have to use a composition book. You, you can use whatever you want. 20 sheets of paper of any kind are fine. Um, I chose to do mine in a composition book because I had one and I wanted this to be something that everyone could do. You know, internationally we all have some version of a composition book usually and they are normally um, affordable. You know, you can find something similar that's very affordable and I just wanted this to be something that everyone could do. That's the reason behind the composition book. Other than that, there is no magic in the composition book. <laughs> you know, when your husband moons you in the middle of your video, you, you, that's just a sign you've been married too dang long. I really think that's what that is. Boy, you just can't unsee something like that. I, I think it's burned into my retinas, and I'm just not going to get over that anytime soon. Okay. I totally forgot what I was talking about, but it had something to do with gluing pages together, right? <laughs> All right. So. Um, yes, if you uh, glue pages together in a composition book, um, chances are they're going to buckle like this. And sometimes they're way bucklier, sometimes not quite so buckled. It just depends on the adhesive that you use. Um, if you want uh, absolutely no buckling on your pages at all, number one, don't use a composition book. It's not just the paper that causes the buckling, it's the way they're bound. If you'll notice, when you open the book, now I don't even know if this is going to show up on camera, but where it's bound, these pages don't lay exactly smooth. I mean, there's some buckling at the uh, stitching in the spine. Because of the way it's stitched in, this is one signature. This is way too many pages for one signature, you know. They, they've put all of these pages in one signature and they've sewn it in and that's really too many for one and so that's the reason that it really doesn't lay smooth when you open it out. You usually see some buckling just automatically right along where the stitching is and it varies in different parts of the book. And then when you start adding glue, this just gets worse, this buckling right here. So, yeah, that's just the nature of the beast. And I really kind of hoped that by using the composition book, you know, having it be something that was cheap and, and easy to come by, I kind of hoped that you would make peace with the buckling. <laughs> That you know, some of you who want super smooth pages and, and are just very rigid about that rule of using super smooth pages, maybe you'd loosen up a little bit and learn to be okay with the buckling. Okay, that's really not happening. <laughs> the buckling is driving some of you nuts, and I don't want that. I don't want it to drive you nuts. This is supposed to be challenging, not painful. So, um, if, if you cannot tolerate this, really use something else. Use a, a watercolor journal. Are those pages, you know, that's going to hold up for you. Um, you know, use what it takes. The pages in the composition book are going to buckle. You can, if you, like I said, if you don't want buckling, don't use a composition book. If you still want to use the composition book, but you don't want so, bu so much buckling, use something like an aerosol spray adhesive. Um, that is very good at gluing pages together with almost no buckling and wrinkling. Um, rubber cement is another one. That one's very good. Basically what you need is a dry adhesive. Double stick tape will work. Um, some glue sticks are very good at not buckling. 
pastes like Yes Paste and Nori Paste. You can sometimes get a little buckling with those. They're not nearly as bad as your liquid glues. Uh, but there's an option for you to reduce the buckling, not eliminate. Um, but today I'm going to demonstrate with good old Elmer's. And I'm going to use this because Again, it's inexpensive, it's widely available, you know, people in other countries usually have access to some form of an affordable white glue or PVA. And I'll give you a few tips on how to reduce the buckling, not eliminate it, because, you know, you can't get blood from a turnip. Is that the saying? Exactly. All right. So, um, these, see to me, these are not bad. These pages are not bad. They have wrinkles, they have buckles, but if you look at them, you know, they're not, they're not horrible. You know, these, to me, this is doable. I'm okay with this. And this is easy to do. It does take a little bit of effort. Now, okay, I was talking about how um, the composition book, the binding here, just kind of lends itself to creating buckling whether you want it or not. Some other options for you are things that are staple bound. They tend to do better. There's, you know, there's not all the stitching in here, so the paper's not stressed at the spine. These are much easier to glue together flat. And in this one, I've glued together, these are just two pages glued together. And as you can see, there's some little wrinkles here and there, but it's not bad. Not bad at all. This one's a single page, but these are just two pages. And when you close the book, you know, it's not a big buckled mess. It's pretty flat. In fact, these were laying on the kitchen table last night, and Jason was standing there. We were talking, and he grabs one and starts, he grabbed this one and starts flipping through it. And he goes, did you glue these pages together? <laughs> and I started laughing, <laughs> and I went, yeah. So he tossed it aside, and he goes, well, how am I supposed to even see anything? So he opened this one, <laughs> and he goes, well, crap, <laughs> just threw it aside. <laughs> and I was laughing, because it was funny, because this one I glued six pages together. <laughs> this is a lot of pages right here. And, you know, it's, it's buckled, it's a little wrinkled, but it's not freakishly misshapen. So, you know, these just tend to glue together a lot smoother than the ones in your composition book. So, you know, use something like this. Use an actual art journal or use something this I intend to use. It, it's just a, something I got in the mail, an advertisement catalog thing. And it has glossy pages. They're not super thick, but as long as I don't overdo it with the acrylic paint and stuff, they're going to be fine. And it has 18 pages in it, which is not enough, but the inside covers, there's 19, 20. So, or I could even do the outside covers and get my 20 pages. So, you know, gluing the pages together is not a requirement. That is just something that you need to do anyway when you're using thin pages and, and slapping paint and stuff on them. You know, you glue them together. It's what we do. It's not a requirement, it's optional. So let's relax about the glue and the pages together, okay? Okay, you're on board? Yes, we're gonna relax about it. All right. Um, if you glue your pages together, you can see they're bucklier than you want them to be. There are some things you can do. Best thing to do is to put wax paper between each one or you know, plastic wrap or something so they don't stick together and then put them under some weight overnight. Leave them overnight. Um, a stack of big books, dictionaries, you know, anything, anything heavy. I've stuck mine under a piece of furniture before. Um, whatever it takes. I usually use, let me show you what I use. I have three of these. They are antique um, oh, are you kidding me? I'm losing my battery. They are um, from an antique, from an old printer. And, you know, they used to use these, these are lead uh, typeface deals that they would put in here. And this is how they set up their, their page to print. And um, I came by three of these. They are extremely heavy. 
and I use these to weight stuff down. So that's an option. I'm going to change my battery and then talk about one more. So, hang on. Instead of putting weight on top of your book, you can also use a book press, which most of us just don't have laying around the house. But a lot of us have a flower press. Mine is small. It's not big enough for the composition book, but it is big enough for other books. And you will find these on the internet sold and advertised as book presses. They will work as book presses um, just for, you know, general flattening and, and drying purposes like we're talking about. This is not a book press. How do I know that? What's the difference between a book press and a flower press? The flower press has four screws. These, you know, you put your flowers in here to dry and flatten them, then you tighten these screws down, and that provides the pressure to flatten the flowers or your book, if that's what you're using it for. A book press does not have four separate screws. It has one big one in the middle. And the reason for that is because if you're using a book press to, uh, you know, cut your pages, to, you know, hold them together so that they're perfectly even, to apply the, the glue for a glue binding, something like that, four screws are not your friend. You need one screw in the middle so that you have completely even pressure all the way around the book. These, there is no way you can be certain that you've got even pressure. Therefore, your book, you know, it may be squeezing down a little bit more on this side than it is on this side, which is going to affect the way that your spine looks, the way that it's bound. You know, how much glue seeps down in between the pages on that glue binding. It's going to be affected if you have uneven pressure on your screws. So four screws is a flower press. One big one in the middle is a book press. For flattening things out, either one will work just fine. So if you've got something like this or can, you know, concoct something like this in your garage, then heck yeah, use it to flatten your pages. So there you go. Okay, let's... Let's look at how we can glue our pages together with minimal wrinkling and buckling. And I do consider this minimal wrinkling and buckling. This is not bad because, you know, once this whole book is done, it's still going to be um, relatively flat, you know, especially if I put it under some weight overnight. You know, this is not bad. So how do we get not bad? And if this to you is just a nightmare, I'll just move on. This video is not for you. <laughs> just move on. Go get your art journal and use that heavy watercolor paper and, and you'll be happy. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> All right. This, I'm just throwing this option out there in case anyone finds it helpful. Here we go. Um, I have wax paper on hand because I, I don't want to glue my pages together, you know that I don't want glued together. I just want to glue the ones that I want to glue together. This is the only composition book I had left in my house, and it's not a complete one. I had ripped some pages out of it. So to get my 20 pages for this one, I'm gluing four together. That's all I need. So there's my four, and I'm going to put a piece of scrap paper here. This is going to be hard for me to explain. Hopefully you can visually see what I'm talking about. Okay, this is going to be, we want the glue here because we want these two glued together, right? This is our next set of four pages. Does it matter whether you glue here or here? Not really, but what does matter or what, what can help this process is whether you pull this page back this way to smooth down or do you pull this page over this way to smooth down. And this is where I'm going to have trouble putting it into words. It is best to take the page that's on the bulky side of the book and fold it over against the page that's on the skinny side of the book. You can kind of see, you know, this is 
there's a ridge here. This is the bulky side of the book, and there's only a few pages here. It's the skinny side. So what I'm going to do is put my glue down, either here or here, doesn't matter. But I want to take this page and put it over that way and then smooth it down. The reason is because if you take this page, pull it this way and smooth it down, you are smoothing it down over this big ridge. This is where the bulk of the pages are, and it's going to be even worse buckling, as you can see. If you pull this one over to that side and smooth it down, then you have the opportunity to get right up next to the stitches and flatten that out to reduce buckling. And that is really I mean, the biggest tip that I can give you is to do what you can to reduce the bulk at the binding and smooth out your pages. Because this right here is usually, for me anyway, this is what causes the problem when I get to the end and my book is fat because my pages are buckly. It's usually because this, they get wadded up and gluey right here. So let's just... Let's just do this so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm going to glue our first one. You need glue. I did some yesterday, so I have a little bit left over in my bowl. I'm just going to take some Elmer's. Put it in. I don't know how much that was. Probably, a quarter, probably less than a quarter cup, maybe a quarter cup. Usually what I do is take it over to the sink, I hold it under the faucet, I grab the faucet knob and I go, you know, on, off. And that's the amount of water that I put in there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't measure. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but I can't really do that. And I know y'all are going to want to know, how much water do I put in? And it does do better, actually, if you water it down. You can use it full strength but it tends to make the wrinkling and buckling even worse because you've, you've, you've got more glue in there and, and that's why the spray adhesives work so well because there's very little between the two sheets of paper. You know, that spray adhesive is really thin and, and that helps to reduce buckling. So you want a really thin layer of glue, but you don't want to water it down so much that it doesn't stick anymore. So I'm thinking maybe if you have, that's not really a quarter cup. Let me try to make this where y'all can have some kind of measurement because I know you and I know you're going to want it. So I'm trying. Okay, let's say that maybe that's a quarter cup of PVA white glue. And let's put in like maybe a tablespoon of water okay so that is roughly you just have to kind of mess with it and see what you prefer and then mix that up good so that just dilutes the glue a little bit this is more glue than I usually use so you know what I think for a quarter cup let's do two tablespoons Okay, yeah. For a quarter cup of glue, two tablespoons of white glue, of water. And those of you in different countries will just, you know, have to make that conversion on your own because I can't do United States math, much less international. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. So it's going to be about the consistency of... What is that the consistency of? It is, um, you want it about the consistency of watered down glue. <laughs> you want it thin enough so that it spreads easy and thin, but not so thin that it loses its stickiness. And try it. You can always add more glue if it's too watery, add more water if it's too gluey. You'll figure it out. I have faith. Normally what I do is sometimes I'll do this side, sometimes I'll do this side, doesn't matter, just pick one. But I go around the edges first, and I do this because I get really irritated when my edges peel.
peel up. So I do this just to make sure that my edges are covered. Then I go in the middle, add glue, smooth it out. You don't want to squeegee it so much that you squeegee it all off, which is possible. But you do want it to be thin. Okay? And yes, the uh, lines are going to run. doesn't matter. Now you take this page, pull it over to that side, and then smooth it out. I shouldn't have stuck that back in there. Well, it doesn't matter. We're going to glue this too. So Use your credit card to smooth it out. I think I still have too much glue in here and I need more water. Can you see it kind of like instantly started to wrinkle and buckle? That's normal. The reason that that happens, and sometimes I tear right through the paper when I'm smoothing, and then that's okay. I just glue another one on top. But if you'll notice, when you add glue, especially watered down glue to paper, the paper absorbs the glue and it expands. It gets bigger. And you'll, that becomes really obvious when you, um, this is the one that's supposed to be over there, not that one. When you're gluing, you know, two pieces of the same size together for a, for a something, and you put glue on one, and then you go to um, lay it down on the other, and suddenly they don't line up. <laughs> They're not the same exact size anymore. And that's because the one with the glue has absorbed some of the glue and the water and it has expanded. So it gets a little bigger. So for that reason, your pages don't really fit together perfectly anymore. And you get this weird buckling from that and then just from the moisture content of the glue. Okay. Next one. I'm going to add some more water. I think it's a little thick still. Three tablespoons for a quarter cup of glue. <laughs> By the end of the video, I'll get this right. And then those poor people who watched, you know, just the first few minutes are going to be so screwed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that feels better. A little, little waterier. Okay. Let's go with that. Edges first. Now, pull this one over. One more. Am I in frame? I can't tell. With each layer, I use a little bit less glue each time because it's already gluey. You know, it kind of soaks in. So you don't have to use quite as much on the, the following pages as you do that first one. Can you see that this page, you see it's, there's pages here sticking out on each end. That's not because the page is crooked, it's because those other pages are full of glue. They have expanded, so now they're bigger than the dry pages. I'll pull this up and show you here in a minute. This is the page I just glued down. And you can see the one right below it is sticking out. Here's the page I just glued down. The one right below it is sticking out. It's sticking out on both ends. So it's not that I glued this page crooked. It's that this page is actually smaller than the ones underneath that are saturated with glue and expanded. Hence, 
the wrinkling and you're just really confusing the paper, right? And that is another reason that some papers work better than others. It just depends on how absorbent they are, how they're bound, how much glue you use. There's just a lot of variables in there that can, you know, really cause problems. Now at this point, you want to stick some wax paper in because you don't want your sections to get glued together. Then you can use wax paper or whatever. I tend to use these scrap papers. Section off four more or five, however many you need to glue together. And I like to section them off like this because if I just leave it here and, and glue as I go, you know, count as I go, I lose count. I can't remember. A am I on the fourth one? Am I on the fifth one? And how many did I already glue together? I don't know because I lost count. So these have to be glued together. So I just do the whole thing again. Put the glue on. I'm still on the fat side. I'm going to be, this is still the fat side, so I want to pull my pages over that way. And it will continue like that until I hit the middle of the book and start working on the other half of the signature. Then I'll need to reverse it because this side is going to start being the skinny one. Make sense? I don't know if that makes any sense at all. It does in my head, and, but I can't really put it into words. So hopefully you can figure out what I'm talking about. Okay, that is really all I have as far as tips for how to glue your pages together, how to use a runny white glue, and still end up with pages that are, yes, they're buckled, they're wrinkled, but they're usable. This is not bad. Plus, if you use any kind of a wet media on here, like the first step is paint and ink. So chances are you're going to use, you know, acrylics or watercolors or calligraphy inks or something like that. That's going to add more water here and it is going to, you can do one of two things. Sometimes I find that it makes the buckling worse. Sometimes I find that it actually improves the buckling. I don't know why and I'm sure it has to do with the water content of the paint and all of that, you know, whatever. You know, I hope that you will um, kind of make peace with some level of Buckley papers. If you can do that, then you have um, significantly broadened the possibilities for you for working on different things. You know, you, you, there are things in this world that need art on them, and they're not all flat, is what I'm trying to say, okay? <laughs> If you limit yourself to only creating art on things that are perfectly flat and smooth, then you're limiting yourself. And if you're good with that, that's fine. You know, this is not, um, this is not designed to make anyone change something that they're perfectly comfortable with. If, you know, if that's your thing, then I'm, I'm glad you keep going. But if you do want to kind of stretch and expand and, and try new things, then... That's what this is for, just to kind of help you along with that. Um, you often hear people say, oh, you just need to loosen up. Just loosen up in your art. Just don't think about it. You know, just, just be more carefree. That's really great advice, but how do you do that? You know, what does that look like in reality? Journaling by fives is what it looks like in reality. <laughs> that stinking timer that everyone hates forces you to be more carefree, um, to be more spontaneous, to not overthink. That's the point of the timer and the point of this whole thing is just to um, expand on what you already have, not to change it, not to replace it. So yeah, okay, there's my spiel. I hope that that was at least somewhat helpful and um, I can't think of anything else to say. So, the end. <laughs>